Hi, I'm Dave from Hector Smokehouse and today I'm going to do a review on a Stumps Smokers Junior. And previously I've done a, a review on the Classic which was um, a much bigger version of the Stumps Gravity Fed um, but this one is the Junior. Um, I've been using a Junior, a red one, in competitions for the last two years. Probably done six competitions with it and have had two Grand Championships and two Reserve Grand Championships. So this year I've transferred across to only cooking with stump smokers. So this is the second one to go in the competition. This one's affectionately known as Prince, um, obviously for the nice purple colour. Um, but what I wanted to do was to go through, talk about some of the main features of the stump smoker and how the gravity feed works, but also to let you have a look around it, see the key features, but also see inside the smoker as well. As I say, this has been really successful for me, and this is the third smoker that I've actually imported across from Australia. So that shows the sort of regard that I, I, I hold them in. Um, I've been incredibly impressed with them, and the service from Stumps and from the guys um, in Centerville in Georgia has been fantastic. Um, so yeah, I just want to take you through it and explain all the different features and how it works so well. Okay, so let's talk about how a gravity smoker actually works. And um, what you can see here is uh, shoot for charcoal. So in here this opens up and in here is a shoot um, where you can place charcoal. Now normally these are using um, briquettes, things like Kingsford. Um, I've exclusively used Kingsford so far on these. It stops any branching and stops anything from sticking in there which you might get if you're using lump wood. So I just use um, briquettes in there. Um, so in, the, in there is, is all the briquettes. There's a shoot. The shoot runs down here all the way to this area here so that's full of briquettes so then what you've got inside of here is a grate, a grill grate and you can see this is pretty thick it looks like it's probably half inch and um, mild steel so probably um, 12 and a half mil thick got lots of holes in so what happens is the charcoal sits on top of here you light the bottom lot of charcoal you can either do that using the chimney starter or you can use something like a map torch and actually set fire underneath and get that bottom layer of charcoal actually going. Once that charcoal is, is lit, it then starts to um, turn to ash. And as the ash, as it turns to ash, the ash actually starts to fall into this ash pan. So this is the ash pan. Now, to get the smoke flavor, all you do is put a few chunks of wood in here, flavor wood, so you could put in um, pecan or cherry wood or whatever it is that you want to suit the meat that you're actually smoking. You put the wood in there, the ash actually falls onto it, creates smoke. There's uh, um, some holes, again some, some holes in the side of here, which allow the smoke and the heat to go into the main cooking chamber. They go through the main cooking chamber and come out of the top through the chimney. So charcoal sits in here, drops down, like the bottom, turns to ash, lands on the wood, creates the smoke and it keeps dropping down. Now the real benefit with this is, and this charcoal on the Junior can last between 10 and 15 hours. So it could be 10 hours of cooking or 15 hours of cooking, which means you don't have to keep refueling it. You don't have to keep uh, tending it every 15 minutes, every 20 minutes or every half an hour. So it's a lot easier than cooking with something like a stick burner. Um, I'm very, um, I like my sleep in competitions and I also like my sleep when I'm cooking at home. So my preference is always um, to try and use something that I don't have to spend a lot of time tending. And this is very, very simple to actually look after. So as you can see, this is the charcoal sheet where we're actually putting the charcoal in. And if we look inside, um, you can see all the way down. And you should be able to see the grate at the bottom where the charcoal sits. And then obviously that's where the, the lit um, charcoals are. And they fall through that grate into the ash pan. So this shows you inside the firebox. So again, in here you can see the plate that I talked about with all the holes cut in. Charcoal sitting on top, ash coming through, going into the ash pan. And then that goes through um, some more holes and goes into the main chamber where the smoke and um, smoke and the heat actually get transferred across. On the firebox, obviously you've got to get air into the fire. So this is caused through this um, ball valve. You can see the ball valve's closed at this moment in time. But you can open the ball valve, and as you see there, you can see um, different amounts of opening which allows different amounts of air to go in. Now, what you've got to do is, um, through trial and error, you work out where 225 is, and 225 might be, um, you know, my fingernail in that case, or maybe 300 might be 
two fingers going in there. So you work out roughly where it is if you don't want to use something like a barbecue guru. Um, what this has on here though is you can also use a barbecue guru. So if you buy a barbecue guru, this is the, um, the, the screw threads that you actually get. So this goes into the ball valve, tightens up into there. And then what you can do is your barbecue guru actually just sits in here and works, works the, um, the amount of oxygen that's going into the fire pit. This is really good. Um, when I cook with this, I'm typically keeping temperature within one degree F um, because it just manages the fire so efficiently. So it's absolutely superb. So I can highly recommend if you get one of these, put, get one of these put on and get a barbecue guru. So on the front of the, the cabinet, you can see there's a stumps uh, thermometer. And this one is the standard one that comes with the stumps. You can leave this in and it does a perfectly good job. Um, I really like it, but also you can buy things like Teltrues. Um, Teltrues are supposed to be a very accurate. Um, you need to make sure you get one, I think it's six inches long. So it goes right the way through the insulated door, right the way through. Um, but you can leave this on or you can get something like a Teltrue and put it in there. Different stumps models comes with different types of accessories and add-ons. Um, the ones that I recommend you, you have on, some of them are standard but some of them are add-ons. Um, this is a slam latch. Now what the slam latch does is if you undo the, the buckles, uh, buckle connectors on there. The slam latch means that you can just close it and it closes um, the smoker and that's probably okay. And then you can tighten it down with the buckles and hold it further in place and just hold the, um, the door against the gasket. This is really good if you're cooking in a comp and you're trying to take um, a tray of meat out and you're using both hands, you can just push on there, it closes it. Once you've put the meat down, you can come back and you can actually fasten the barbecue down. Now, what also I found really important is these aluminium grab handles. And um, this one's at a great height. Um, it allows you to actually move it around very easily. So this is, is tremendous. I'd make sure you get one of these. It makes moving the, means you can move it on a dime. And the wheels on this thing are, are really good as well. So if you look at the wheels, um, at the back is pneumatic tires. Um, these are especially good if you're in competitions and you're trying to move um, the smoker up and down ramps. Um, these are really good. And then at the back side of it, on the, the, the back side near where the handle is, you've got fully movable wheels. So they spin around. So it means you can really turn it very easily. Um, so I'd always, I'd recommend that you get the pneumatic wheels. Um, they're not always standard on all models, but you can get them as an accessory. And, and I'd always recommend that you actually put those on. Another addition that I, I recommend and, and think is a really good addition uh, that you pay extra for is this aluminium checker plate. So this goes on the top of the smoker and what it does is allows you to put things on top without worrying about the pen. So you can put your thermo pen on there, if you're having a drink you can put your drink on there, but it means that you're not going to damage the paint, so it gives you a little bit more confidence. However, the one thing that I'd be concerned about and, and I'm worried about at times is these edges. So sometimes these edges are really, really sharp and have not been taken down. So if you're ever cleaning the barbecue, be extremely careful around these edges. And um, I've cut myself twice on the other one. So I'd always maybe get a Dremel and actually take those edges off and uh, round it so that you're not going to cut yourself. But I, I highly recommend putting the checker plate on if you can. It makes the barbecue look really good, but it also um, makes sure that you're, you're saving that lovely paintwork. So typically the standard colour for a stump is black, um, so it's a bit Henry Fordish, you can have any colour you want as long as it's black. Um, so that's a standard colour and that's what's standard in the price. However you can ask for different colours and uh, even get them colour matched if you want to. So my, my other one is a red one, um, so I've got a, a red junior the same as this, um, but this one's purple and it's got a, a tiny bit of metallic in as well. Um, so it just looks a little bit different, a bit more individual. Um, so you can be just plain black if you want that, but if you want to have something different, then don't, don't be afraid to actually ask for that. So let's have a look inside the stump. So this is the Junior. So inside the Junior, what you can see, in this case I've got four shelves in here. Um, typically they come with three shelves, that's the normal. Um, my other one has three shelves on it, and that's fantastic for doing things like pork butt and briskets. However, this one I'm going to use especially for um, ribs and chicken and things like lamb. So I was quite happy having a smaller gap in here and um, putting in an extra shelf so it gives me a bit more real estate. So the other things to notice in here is this is a trip tray. This trip tray can go in and, ha in and out. Um, there's a hole here and what happens is there's a tube and a hole 
um, your fat and drippings goes down, goes into this channel, goes through the hole, and underneath the stump is a hot, small hotel pan. So that's where all your fat and your drippings go into. Also in here you've got a heat diffuser. And this is very different for the Junior compared to all the rest of them. So the Classic is very different um, to this. This is the only one I think that has this heat diffuser. So what's happening is the heat and the smoke is coming out of this end and it's actually getting passed through this whole um, mechanism. And with all these holes in here, you've got the smoke coming out across, more across, evenly across the whole of the cabinet. And you've also got the heat coming out more evenly as well. So instead of just the heat coming out of that area there and going straight up, it's actually spreading out. So it seems to give you more of a, an even cook and more even temperatures in here. So as I showed you, this is the drip tray. The drip tray goes in and out and just slides back in underneath the smoker itself. So all of the fat and drippings drip into there. You just take that out and change it over. So one of the other major points of, of getting these cabinet smokers is actually seeing the insulation on these. So the whole thing is insulated. You can see this door is nearly two inches thick. So you've got two plates of steel, but in between um, the steel, you've actually got some sort of thermal wool. That's actually in between there and creates an insulation. So when you're cooking on this, it stays at temperature really well. If you open the door and close it, it gets back to temperature really well as well. So perfect for cooking in cold conditions um, or where it's windy or rainy, this is absolutely perfect. Um, but it really holds the temperature well when you finish cooking and you shut this down. It can take a long time to cool down as well because of this beautiful insulation on here. Hopefully you found my review of the Stump Smoker Junior model very useful. Uh, if you did, please click um, like um, on the video um, or even please subscribe to the channel. What I will do is on another video, I'll actually show you how to light um, the stump smoker. There's a couple of ways of doing it, so I'll go through and show you how to light it. And I'll also try and put a video together showing you how to season a new one of these as well. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, and um, I'll see you on the next one.